Hi everyone. So now we are going to see one full example of the a priori algorithm. So let's assume we have this table here with a set of nine transactions, each, each one containing a set of items, right? Um, and we are going to find uh, the frequent item sets. Let's assume that the minimum support that we are going to have here is um, 2 divided by 9. So in other words, one item set, item set is going to be considered as frequent if it appears uh, twice, at least twice across the, the transactions. Um, so the first step is to build C1, right? The set of candidates of size 1. And um, so we can easily see here that the sets are I1, I2, I3, I4, and I5, right? So these ones are item sets of size 1. I actually should use like brackets for each of the item, but uh, for simplicity, let's write it like that. So now, in order to build a L1 first, we need to count the frequency of each of these item sets, right? So we can see that I1 exists um, six times, right, across the, the transactions, because I1 is in included in T0, T3, T4, T6, T7, and T8, right? So it exists six times. So the same way we can check that I2 exists seven times, I3 exists six times, and I4 and I5 exist two times, right? So all of them um, are approved because they have a count greater or equal than two out of nine, right? So they are all approved. And then we can build L1 which is the set of frequent item sets of size one. And in this case, it's going to be equal to C1, right? So now we need to uh, build C2. And C2 is the set of candidates of size two. For that, we need to create the join step between uh, I mean, from L1, right? In this case, it's going to be uh, joining each item with all the items that satisfies the, the uh, that satisfy the, the join uh, condition, right? In this case, remember that um, first we need to validate the order, and in this case, the order is natural because it's going to be I1, I2, I3, I4 and uh, I5. So the process is like we, we write um, all the pairs that come out of the joining step, right? So in this case, C2 is going to be equal to I1 with I2. We need to put together all the items that where the second one is greater than the first one. Uh, in, the or in the order, right, in the lexical order we previously defined. So it's 1 and 2, um, then it's uh, 1 and 3, 1 and 4, 1 and 5, then uh, 2 and 3, 2 and 4, Two and five, then three and four, three and five, and uh, four and five. So this is the set of candidates of size two. So now we need to count the frequency of each of these uh, item sets of size two. For example, I one and I two, we can see see that exist 
four times, right? In transaction zero, three, seven, and eight. So it's, it's going to exist here. We can write four, right? For I1 and I3, it exists the same way four times. I1 and I4 exist just once. I1 and I5 exist twice. I2 and I3 is 4. I2 and I4 is 2. And uh, I2 and I5 is 2. And then I3 and R4 is, and I4 is 0. I3 and I5 is 1. And I4 and I5 is 0, right? So here we can already um, discard the ones that do not satisfy the minimum support, right? In this case, are all the ones that have a count smaller than two. So this one, this one, also this one. Okay, so now we are ready to build L2, which is the set of item sets of size two that satisfy the minimum threshold that have a count greater or equal than two. In other words, the, the frequent ones, right? So in this case, it's going to be I1 and I2, I1 and I3, I1 and I5, I2 and I3, I2 and I4. Let me actually move this a little bit so I can get some space to write this in the same line. So, okay, so finally I2 and I5. Okay, cool. So now we need to continue by creating the C3, which is the set of free of candidates of size three, right? So I'm gonna copy this entire set. And I'm gonna use it in the next page. Okay, so C3 is gonna be the join from L2. And uh, the idea is that we must actually, I'm gonna again um, paste L2 here. To make easier to understand the join step, so let's actually first delete this. Uh, so the join says that the join step requires that we join the pairs that satisfy the join condition, which is like the the first item must to be the same, and in the second item of the item set, the one that belongs to the item set here in the second line is greater greater than the one that belongs to the item set in the first line. For example, this one cannot be joined with this one, right? Because even though the first item is the same, the second is also the same. And that's not what the rule, the join step rule says. So the, the rule says that the last item, they have to be different. And actually the one that is here below must to be greater than the one that is up here in the lexical order that in this case is I1, then I2, then I3, and so on. So the first item set can be joined with this one, right? Because this one satisfies the join condition. Uh, this one also. This one not, right? Because in this case, the, the first item is not the same. Okay, so from here we can see that 
we can create um, the join between I1 and I2, the join with uh, I1 and I3 is going to be I1, I2, and I3, right? And the same way, I'm going to write I1 and I2 together with I1 and I5 will produce I1, I2, and I5. So here we already have two item sets of size 3 that uh, are going to be part of, the, of C3, right? 